welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, and today we're going to talk about Bengage.com, which is a great tool for, for building vertical graphics, vertical infographics, um, where you're taking multiple data sets and placing them into the graphic in different areas uh, instead of just creating a single chart like you would with Data Wrap or Google Flourish or something like that. that. So this is taking multiple data sets from various uh, sources, could be just one source, uh, and putting them together uh, in a visual way uh, as a vertical infographic. And these vertical infographics were great as attachments to social media posts. Uh, you can place them at the end of stories and they look great. Um, uh, all kinds of really cool stuff. And there are many tools like Vengage out on the web. Um, there's uh, Infogram is a really good one. Uh, but the reason I like Vengage.com is it gives you a lot of control over the template. Um, you can add and adjust colors it, it, uh, with fonts, with backgrounds, just about anything uh, that you want to change on the uh, uh, chart or the template, uh, you can, um, which is great. And you can also embed interactive features, interactive charts into it. Uh, you can embed videos into it. You can embed a YouTube video into it, which is really cool. Um, a few things about Vengage, and I'll talk a little bit about the process you should follow when building one of these graphics. Then we'll get into the tool and some examples and show you what you can do with it. Um, again, it, it helps you create these vertical infographics. Uh, you can embed all these cool features in them. Uh, the paid version runs for about $150 annually. Um, there are uh, versions that are a little more expensive. The free version has many of the same features. You can export it as a ping file, as a static image or export it as embed code in JavaScript. Uh, so you can have all the interactive features, video or uh, you know, rollover graphic or map of some kind. Um, the process to follow when using Vengage before you ever touch a, the software is you always want to take a minute to think of the idea. What is my uh, story going to be and what data sets do I need to pull and research do I need uh, to get in order to get all that in order. Don't start building the graphic first do the research and, and have your idea really vetted out. Step number three, I think it's critical, and I always require my students to do this when I'm teaching them at UIC, is to sketch what you want to do with the graphic. If you sketch it out and get a good idea on a sheet of paper, and it can just be a simple little thumbnail, it doesn't need to be anything too detailed. Once you have that in place, then you're able to go in and pick a good template, and it'll save you a ton of time because nothing is worse than actually developing a graphic and not being able to finish it uh, because you're moving things around on the screen. So find a template then in Vengage, which we'll open up in a minute, and then begin your design. Once you're done with your design, always add your credits and sources in the bottom left corner, including your credit. Um, it's important to save all the links to those credits. I'll show you where those go in a little bit. Uh, and then you just simply publish uh, or export um, uh, a graphic and uh, drop it in, into your story uh, somehow. You can drop it in as an image if it's a static image or embed it if it's basic uh, uh, JavaScript embed code and it works well with your, your graphic or your uh, uh, CMS. Um, here's some examples of the types of graphics you can build. Uh, this one was on a new law uh, that was going into place in Arizona on craft breweries. Um, that we did at Cronkite News down in Arizona. Uh, and this student uh, pulled, you know, just this basic template, um, imported this image. It's got a very deep archive of uh, photos uh, and uh, rights-free uh, video that you can use. Um, and it's built in right into the graphic, which is really uh, nice, right into the tool. Um, then she used a series of bar charts and little icons to kind of help tell the story um, of not just craft beer in Arizona, but also in the U.S. about what a craze, you know, this has been and uh, how millennials are drinking a lot of it, along with wine and other spirits. Um, so uh, this is a real simple graphic. Student had about a day to work on it. Um, most of her data came uh, from uh, the uh, Craft Brewers Association, uh, the uh, Brewers Association. Uh, most of that data came from there, but there were some other sources as well. And she attributes throughout the, the post here where she got them. Usually you'll put your graphic credit down here at the bottom where the uh, data came from. Um, a few others to look at. This is a look at uh, Title IX and uh, girls' high school sports. We were looking at inequities in Indiana 
Uh, and uh, this is a good example of, you know, a little uh, stack bar chart you can do. Um, this is just a static image. They were showing, you know, 40% uh, participation here. It really broke down the numbers. Um, the way I always treat these types of graphics, if your story is getting too crowded with numbers, perhaps you can pull them out and create an infographic with them. They're also good for doing listicles, um, steps. Uh, there's timeline, many timeline templates in there, uh, which are really good as well. Um, they do have some COVID-19 and coronavirus uh, uh, templates that are in there. Um, this team put together a nice little intro here, uh, and then they had some data. This is from spring 2020. Uh, as we can see, it was really bad in New York and New Jersey. Um, so they created a little rollover map with that, with nothing but a spreadsheet. You know, they pulled this data from the CDC and just loaded it in here. They uh, loaded the map in and moved it over. You can uh, just select it from a little pull down menu. I'll show you how to do that. They also uh, posted a table of all their raw data right here from the CDC as well. This is from late April. Um, so really cool. And then they did a little thing at the bottom on protective measures, um, embedded a couple of videos here on hand washing and you know, wearing a mask, things like that. Uh, how to stay informed, you know, some good sources to go to. Um, and then they have their source list down here at the bottom, S symptoms to look for, things like that. Very simple icons, so very simple graphic. Notice it's got a lot of white space, a lot of air to it. Uh, not too crowded, save for this area, you know, I might have aired out this a little bit. Um, but they had sketched this out. They had an idea of what data sets they had pulled and kind of sketched out that they want to do the map and the data up high. Then have some instructional stuff here. Uh, and then just some uh, general safety stuff at the bottom. Uh, so they just kind of sketched this out freehand uh, and then we're able to pull together a really nice infographic uh, out of it. Um, here's another one on coronavirus, very simple icons. Again, a stacked bar chart. She broke it down by age um, and uh, dropped that bar chart in. Um, pie charts too, works well for that. Uh, you can do just uh, a graphic like this with it, but uh, I'm more of a fan of using Google Flourish or Data Wrapper for that. But, Still, you can do some really cool stuff. She's got her credit and her sources here at the bottom. Um, one more to show you. Um, this is uh, just a uh, listicle, uh, 10 tips to prevent uh, spreading the coronavirus. Very simple little icons here, you know, uh, just to make it visual. Uh, and then there's steps <clears throat> listed right along here, uh, along with a little uh, description next to it. So some of these uh, templates are fairly simple. Uh, but trying to put this into a you know a story and slow a story down by listing all ten of these, uh, even in bullet point form, would have been uh, not a great thing. It looks great, you know, kind of at the bottom of the story. It's kind of a reward for the reader uh, to see this at the bottom of the story. Again, it attaches very very well uh, to a uh, tweet or a Facebook post. It's a good way to uh, tease your work. Um, so good, really good thing to do. Um, Vengage, here it is. Um, it's got several things up here at the top. Um, my designs is uh, the area you go to to look at uh, all of your previous graphics that you've built. Um, you can open them up and edit them and resave them. Um, once you've resaved it, if it's embedded somewhere, uh, you can go in and find new ones. There's also good comparative charts in here. So this is really good for the elections. Um, you can have one candidate on the right, one on the left, and, and uh, you know compare the two. Uh, so there's uh, timelines like this. Uh, I'll open this one up. Uh, this is one a student had been working on. It always gives you these great little quotes uh, uh, here as it opens up the graphic. Uh, this was just a simple timeline that the student did. They always give you little instructions here of how to insert things. Uh, but very simple, um, not a lot of images with this one, uh, but just a real quick, simple timeline of how the coronavirus uh, got its legs here in the US. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the templates tab right here, um, it gives you many different types of templates that are listed in categories down the left-hand side here. So if you're going to do a map maybe of the U.S. Uh, in your chart and know that's, that's going to be the predominant part of your graphic, you might want to go in and find you know, one with a U.S. or world map here um, and open one of these up. And they always give you kind of some default data in there, um, but you can delete all these out, change the background color. Some of them I'd strongly encourage, you know, like this orange background. Ground, getting rid of that. <clears throat> Always look for templates that have clean backgrounds, a lot of white space with them. They're easier to read. You know, this one's very clean. This one's clean. This one, not so much. You know, the, the hot pink, I would uh, discourage that. But you can change those backgrounds. It's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. Um, timelines, again, there are several different timeline uh, charts in here. Uh, some really cool ones. They've added a few in here, uh, even since I had this open a couple of weeks ago. 
Uh, so all kinds of different timelines. Some are more techie driven. Um, some are you know, uh, more biotech like this. Um, people use this tool for to design posters, all kinds of different things. So um, yeah, it's uh, many, many uses for it. We're just using it journalistically. Um, informational is uh, you know, another uh, popular uh, area uh, to go to. So um, those are uh, some of the basic templates that are, are available to you uh, by category down the left-hand side. So always think about that before you go in and design, maybe go in and look at some of the templates available and then start doing your sketching. Um, I'll open one up here. Um, this is a, a real simple horizontal uh, graphic. They do uh, horizontal as well as verticals. Um, it's just a little uh, template, you know, uh, Anchor Liberty Beer. And you can click on here and it's got a static image in here that you can size down uh, and move around on the page. Um, you can also lock in things, like if I wanted to lock together uh, the body text and the headline, um, I could group them here and slide them together up around the page. Um, you know, it's a very popular uh, feature. Um, if I wanted to add something over here, like another photo, uh, there are many flyouts down here uh, that I could add another photo. And all these photos are rights free too, which is just you know, tremendous. So, uh, you know, maybe if I wanted to add that photo, I just clicked on it. Um, I can go in and replace it with a photo or icon by double clicking on it. If not, I've got it right out here. And now I've got a new photo in there that I can size in in which way I want. Other features uh, besides photos, uh, you can upload your own images as well. If you have maybe shot some photography, uh, you can just drag and drop it here or hit this upload button. As you can see, we've brought several images in here uh, from the outside before. Uh, that we've used in our uh, various designs. If I wanted to add a chart, maybe a, a line chart or you know, a basic table I could put in there as well if I just wanted to show my raw data. Many selections of different types of, of uh, charts that you can uh, add. I could do a basic bar chart if I wanted to of, of sales uh, of, uh, of beer and I could size this down a little bit. Um, move it around a little bit. This. Uh, If I double click on it, I get my little spreadsheet here. here. Um, I can change the headline to everything's editable, which is really nice. Um, Amber Ale, IPA, Dark, and then I'm going to go, you know, they need 1,800 bottles of that, 1,100 bottles of IPA. I'm not a big IPA fan. Uh, and then dark moved 600. And then I can go in and change my chart title. And I can change all kinds of different things. I can show legends. Uh, you can change colors of the font. If I want it to be red or a different font type, font size, um, you know. It was a slow May in Chicago, mainly because of the virus. <laughs> so I'll adjust my headline here and get it to a different color, um, bring up the font size a little bit. I'll take it up to about 22 point. Uh, and I hate Roboto, uh, so I'm going to go with a different font here. I'll do Aldrich. Ugh, that's even worse. A little better. There we go. And now I've got a graphic on here. Um, so that's how easy it is to do these charts. You know, and you can upload a spreadsheet in here too if it's more involved. Uh, if I want to change that background color, you know, I can change it to white. Um, you know, you can adjust all the colors. Again, try not to get too bright of colors. You know, something like that red is just too much. Something you know, a very light tan, a white. You know, even, even gradients work uh, work well most times. You can kind of eyeball it in as soon as you've done a few of these graphics. You'll know what makes for a good background image or what doesn't. Um, the interactives are down here at the bottom. If you wanted to bring in a YouTube video or something, uh, a survey or a poll, you could ask your readers a question, which is really good, or have them fill out a little form. Um, if I have the URL of my YouTube video, maybe you know, uh, I've shot some video of some of the uh, microbreweries around the city or something, and uh, I could drop that video in there and embed it you know, up here or something like that. So 
in a nutshell, that's you know how you build out uh, the different elements on the page. And again, uh, you always want to prioritize. Go with bigger graphics at the top and have them get a little smaller as you go down. Um, and then once you're ready to go, uh, you can hit publish. It'll give you the JavaScript embed code where I can download it in a ping file or a ping HD. Uh, I usually take my ping file and load it into uh, uh, Photoshop and si resize it and you know, maybe sharpen it a bit. Um, or you can do the uh, uh, HD ping file and you get a high resolution uh, image out of it. And it just downloads it right to your uh, desktop or to your uh, downloads folder, wherever you uh, want it to go. Um, so that's FinGage in a nutshell. Again, you know, a lot of different features. Um, you can embed maps too. Um, it has almost every country and state in here. Um, and as you open up the states, you know, if I wanted to look at Florida's uh, sales for uh, uh, beer, I could drop that in there, double click on it, and it will give me every county in there. And I can just drop my data in in alphabetic order, which is really nice. Uh, again, you could drop a spreadsheet in here as well. Hit just hit the import button. Uh, or uh, a public drive, Google public uh, drive, uh, Google Drive public spreadsheet uh, URL in here too. So um, if it's updating live, then you can always go in and insert it. So uh, I wanted to make sure you guys knew about the maps uh, as, as well. Um, so that is about all for uh, uh, Vengage. Um, again, all the links to Vengage and uh, to other things uh, I talk about on here are in the notes area of your uh, video uh, right underneath uh, the video itself in the notes area. Thanks again. Um, if you want to explore uh, more uh, Journalist Toolbox tools, just go to journalisttoolbox.org. Uh, we have a whole section on data visualization. Uh, if you just hit browse topics over here and go to data journalism, uh, everything from scraping tools to tools like Vengage and other infographic tools, mapping tools, a lot of really good stuff here. So uh, take advantage of journalisttoolbox.org. Thank you much, guys. We'll see you later.